Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode. In this video, we're going to learn how to use SSR with a custom-built React application and Express. So, this right here is what we're going to be building, which is simply a React application that has a home and about page. But what's special about it is this was rendered on an Express server. So if we inspect this and we look at it inside the Network tab, we can see it uses SSR. Well, if we inspect what's returned, our local host, which is just our main HTML, Inside here, inside this div ID root, which houses our React application, instead of nothing being in here, we have all the HTML code that is present on here. And it not only works for the home page, but also if we go to the about page, oh, if we go to the about page and inspect again, if we refresh on our about page, we also get the HTML returned for the about page. And what's good about this, if we, we can tell this is also using SSR by, say we go to my old, website wicode.com which doesn't use ssr we can tell by if we look in the network tab and we go to wicode.com what we get is just a div with the id of root and no html inside here and this is because this is rendered on the client so basically this empty code is sent back along with some javascript and then that javascript is executed by the browser which creates our react application so what we're going to be doing and what we built this with is rendering it on our express server which is done in here. And essentially, of course, we're gonna, I'm gonna go through all this stuff, but we essentially just render our React application on the server to HTML and then send it back, as opposed to doing all this with just the client. But so, this is what we're gonna be building. So server-side rendering, or SSR, is a technique that renders a single page application, or SPAs, HTML on the server, as opposed to waiting for the browser to load and render it. Specifically, when it comes to React, the server program will import the React application's root component and render it into an HTML document to return to the client. So why do we use SSR? Well, SSR is commonly used to improve a single page application's SEO, or search engine optimization. This is because rendering the page on the server means that search engine crawlers don't have to run any code in the browser to get the rendered HTML. Instead, the server renders the HTML. But now let's begin creating our project. So first, let's just initialize an empty directory as an ex ES6 npm project with npm in it ES6-y. This will create package.json where the type is set to module so we can use the import keyword. So now let's create our custom React application with Webpack. And to do this, we'll use the module bundler Webpack. First, let's create a Webpack configuration file called webpack.config.cjs we're well, going to have common JS syntax in here. And now we need to install a few libraries to get this working. And these are Webpack itself. So we'll install Webpack, also Webpack CLI for command line arguments with Webpack. Also the HTML Webpack plugin. And let's just install these with D. Dash D is a development dependency. And now let's also install some Babel libraries. So we're going to be, these are going to be in the Babel scope. And it's preset env at babel-preset-react, and then babel-loader. And actually, we want to install these as development dependencies as well. And I believe we can do that by just running this again, but tagging on dash D. So if we look inside our package.json, this is basically all the stuff we need to create a React application. And we'll go over um, what each of these are now. So basically, the babel libraries, these here, allow Webpack to convert our JSX code into code the browser understands. The HTML Webpack plugin is a Webpack plugin that allows us to add our JavaScript code to an HTML file. And then of course we just have Webpack and Webpack CLI. So now let's configure Webpack with our Webpack configuration file. And at the top level, we're just gonna export an object. And actually inside here, we will be exporting two objects. So we have two configurations, one for our Express server and one for our React application. And to begin, we're just gonna fill in what both of these configurations share. So I'm getting some code from a separate window. Paste all this in. And so what this is, is both, both our Express server and React application will need to use Babel to convert JSX code into code that the browser understands. Both configure, and that's why we're using this Babel loader here. And both configurations will also resolve both JS and JSX extensions. This will allow us to leave off the .js and .jsx extensions when importing files. But this here essentially says that for every file ending in .js or .jsx, excluding node modules, pass them through the Babel loader, 
which essentially will convert our JSX code into code that the browser understands. And now let's fill in our server configuration. So after all this, we're just gonna create a server config. Let's just paste this in. So here we are telling Webpack that our express server is in a node environment. It uses the environment, um, the environment variable port, which we're gonna set to 3001. And it should also start the bundling process using the server.jsx file, and then output this to a folder called dist called server.cjs. And now this is our server config. Let's fill out our client config. I'm just gonna paste this in here. So here we are telling Webpack that our React application is in a browser environment with the target set to web. We also tell it to output our bundle to an HTML file called index.html inside our client folder. So here we're saying to output our bundle to an index.html file inside the client, client folder inside a source folder. The bundling process is gonna start at client-index.jsx and it outputs the results to a folder called dist. And something important that we need to add here is also this public path key. And this is important as it is where Express will be serving this application from. We will see more of this later on and all of this may later on, but for now, let's just export these two configurations, which we can do module.exports, and we'll do an array, a server config, and a client configuration. And now let's create some useful commands inside package.json to run Webpack. So here, we're gonna create a few. So now, running npm start, we'll clean out our disk folder, build a new disk folder with our Webpack configuration, and then run our server application. And note that this command here, or these commands might not run properly on a Windows machine. Uh, there might be some ec extra packages that you need to install to be able to run two commands um, one after the other, or you might be able to run this inside some kind of Linux shell or something like that. But for Windows, or, this might be a little different. But you can see clean removes our distribution folder, build will run the clean command, and then use the Webpack configuration to build our bundle. And then we, when we run start after it's built the bundle, it will run our server file, which serves up our Express application. But now that we've essentially got all our Webpack stuff sorted out, let's start working with React. And first, we're gonna install React itself, which of course is just a library, React DOM, and React Router DOM. And now let's create a source folder to hold our application code, and then a client folder in it to hold our React code. So let's create a source folder inside here, client folder to hold our React application. And now let's create our index.html file. And now let's fill in this index.html file, which will basically just be a shell really. So this HTML file just has some simple boilerplate code, but the most important part is this div here with the ID root. This div element will hold our React application. And now let's create our index.jsx file. So in here, index.jsx. In this file, we'll use the React DOM NPM package's client API to initialize the app on the client. More on this in a second, but essentially put this code in here. And so the most important line in this file is this hydrate root method. And the hydrate root method is used to display React components in a browser whose HTML was previously generated by React DOM dash server. So we have React DOM dash client here on the server, on our express server, we'll be using React DOM dash server. Specifically, what this hydrate root method does is it will attach each component's logic to the server generated HTML. In other words, hydrate root adds React functionality to the static HTML that the server generates. So if we did not hydrate our application, then our application would simply be plain HTML returned from the server. The first argument to this hydrate root method is the DOM node that was rendered as the root element on the server, which will of course just be our div with the ID root. And the second argument is the React node that we want to render the existing HTML of, which of course is this here. This existing HTML will come from our Express server. We also surround our React application with React Browser's browser router, so right here, as the browser, the browser router component enables navigation between components. And now let's just create our app component. And let's actually create a folder inside our client. Let's call it components. We'll call this app.jsx. And now let's fill in our, our app.jsx component. So our app component has a navigation bar and two routes. So we have nav bar, which we will create soon. And then two routes here that take you to the home page and the about page. So nothing really crazy going on here. 
But first, let's create our navbar. So in here, navbar.jsx, and this will simply just import a link from Route Router DOM that takes us to either the home or about page. Now let's create our home component. So home.jsx. And our home component is simply just an h1 tag letting us know we're on the home page right here. And then some just good old lorem ipsum. And essentially, let's do our about page now, which will be honestly just about the same. So once again, we have some lorem ipsum and an h1 tag. So that's all there really is to our React application. Now let's start working with Express. And to begin, let's install Express from NPM. So just NPMI Express. And now let's create a server folder inside our source folder. So this, we have our client, which is what our server will serve up. And then we have our server. And at the top level of this folder, let's create a server.jsx file. And this will hold our Express code. And the reason actually we have a JSX extension for our Express app is because it will import some JSX code, namely our app.jsx component, which we'll see in a second. But let me just get some of the server code here. So here, all we're doing is just setting up a simple Express server that listens on the port number provided by Webpack. So we can see we get our port from the process env, which comes from inside our Webpack configuration. We use this plugin here, the environment plugin, to set the port to 3001 which is where our Express server will list on. And it also serves static content from the route dash static. And it does this using the Express middleware, express.static. The static content that it serves up will be the files in our Webpack generated disk folder, which we will also see soon. And we also made it so our application listens to get requests on any route and then sends back a 200 with just saying hi. And now let's start importing the necessary packages to render our React application on the server. So let me copy these over. So first we need to import the static router from React DOM, React Router DOM server. And the static router is used to render a React router application in a server environment. We then import the React DOM server API, which we'll use, which we will use to render the React application on the server. We then import our app component of our React application and the core FS module. Of course, the app component is what we will be rendering. And now let's just create a function that renders our React application. And what I'm gonna put this is just right here. So what this function does is it first renders our React application to a string using React DOM server dot render to string. It then reads from our index.html file in the dist folder that Webpack bundled together and places the React application HTML inside. So we get our, what we do is we essentially read from our index.html file and we replace this div id equals route root with our React app string. And also this function here takes location as an argument. And this location will come in from the request and is then passed to the static router. This is so if a user types in dash about in the URL bar, it will render and return that page of the React application. And now let's just add this function to our express route. So we can get rid of that just hi that we would send back with something a bit more meaningful. So now when we get any get request, we will create the index.html or we will create our React application using the URL of the request and then send it back. And the reason this is showing up here is I think because we did some typing up here. And if we have to, the reason we can fix this is we set this to promise string and that's gone away. But so, and once again, now whenever we receive a get request, we will respond with the HTML of our rendered React application. Okay, so now let's work with our application. And to get it started, all we have to do is run npm start in the console and cross our fingers, hoping that everything is working. And what do you know? Looks like we have server started on port 3001. Let's see what happens if we access this route. So localhost 3001. So on page localhost 3001, we got our home page. Now let's actually check that SSR was used. And the way we can do this is we can inspect and look inside our network tab. So if we get in here and we believe if we hit command R and we look at localhost and our response is correct. So we can see this div ID route and some HTML. So all the HTML was rendered on the server and then sent back. If for example, SSR did not work, then what it would look like is I have an old website, witcode.com, which does not use SSR. And one way we can look at this is if we run network refresh here and we look at the website, we can see our div ID root and that's it. 
there's nothing else to this here, just um, some code after that. But the, what's great about SSR is instead of just getting a div with the ID route, and then it'll import the, all the code and create the React, React application from it, in case with our SSR application, when we inspect the network tab, we see it's already all rendered. So we get all this HTML, which is better for SEO and because it's easier for Google or whatever browser it is, web crawlers to understand what's going on without running any code. And now let's see if these links work. So about page and everything works. And if we click about, let's see what happens if we, the about document was also rendered. So we get our nav bar and then we get here saying H1 about page. And something else I want to note, I want to note is that if you look in our network tab, you can also see this client.js here. So what this does is this adds the functionality to our application. So if we just received, for example, this HTML here, it wouldn't have much functionality. The A with the hrefs would work, but say we had some kind of use state hook that increments a counter, that wouldn't work if we didn't also get our client.js file, which, hide, which is used to hydrate our application with that hydrate root method that we were talking about earlier. But nevertheless, this was my video on creating a React application with Express Webpack using SSR. If you have any questions, leave them, in the, leave them for me in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, I wanna thank you for watching and thank you for liking and subscribing today. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.